Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, we are once again licking the boots of Magic GG to pull another deck off the Platinum Mythic list. This one is a Jund, a Jund mis, mid range deck. And uh, I'm not a big fan of three color decks. I always feel that the mana balance is rough. But I got high hopes that this one, being off the Platinum Mythic list, is going to be able to pull itself together and be effective a vast majority of time. What do you think that win rate's going to be? 55%? 65%? Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I'm your host, the seven-time participation award winner at the Dance Dance Revolution Championship in held in El Paso, Texas, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Filmed for a live studio audience. Thank you so much. Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck I found over on Magic GG off the Platinum Mythic list. That uh, list has been pretty good this week, and I, uh, I'm hoping this one is going to be as good as the one we saw yesterday. All right, so what are we playing today? We're playing a... J I always pronounce it wrong. Jund? 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 Jund there we go. Jund mid-range deck. Um, I just named it that because it's Jund, and I couldn't find... It wasn't like necessarily tribal didn't necessarily have any sort of synergy you could potentially call it ramp you potentially call it dragon or dinosaur tribal but, ah, i just didn't felt like that was like that was enough so anyways jun min range that was what we're playing so what we're gonna do is we take a look at the cards in here we're gonna talk a little bit about how the deck should work and then we're gonna go out and we'll crush some hopes and dreams all right what do we got we got uh creature kill we got a little bit of card draw we got uh some board wipe of either creatures and planeswalkers or artifacts and the low end varieties of both. We got uh, mana ramp. We've got mana ramp. We've got uh, this is a what does it do? Uh, look at the opponent's hand for some to discard something. Look through your 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 library and uh, put something into your hand. Lose free life. And lastly, put a card from your graveyard from a graveyard into the battle for the neutral. So not yours, maybe your opponent's. This one. Uh, Blows, burns down, does five damage to all creatures and planeswalker, effectively is a board wipe. Or you can put three devils that when they die, they do one damage to any target and they have haste. Trampling Karmasaur is a 7 6 trampler with discover five, which is fantastic. You can also use it for three as a three point of damage to target creature or planeswalker in a pinch. Virtue of Persistence has an adventure that does negative three, negative three to target creature, regain two life. For seven, then you can start pulling things out of. Any graveyard into the battlefield under your control, one per turn during your upkeep. So if you get seven, you get nothing better to do. That is a fantastic way to go. Atali comes out, tramples seven seven. Uh, you exile cards from the top of the library until you reach a non-land card, both you and your opponent, and you may cast any number of spells from amongst the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Transform them into Super Mecha Atali. It was an 11-11 indestructible trampler, and uh, whenever it deals damage, it deals that much poison counters as well. Just insano. Truckload of weird ass dual lands in here. One that does disenchant, and this one will uh, cycle if you need it. All right, so yeah, if you play Caravan of Souls, play it for dinosaurs. That's the only creatures we got in here. So that's it. What are we going to do with this deck? We're going to control the board a little bit with these two cards. We'll uh, try to ramp our way quickly into the 5 and 6 and 7 category as quickly as possible. Continue to burn down the house to clear the board of any sort of problems. And then go to town on people with Trumpeting Carnosaur and Natali. Can we make this happen? Well, let's go find out. But before we do, let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Dear Black King Toxroll, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear your prayer, hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, seeing the driven before us, and to hear the lamentation of the women. 
All right, putting against Mr. Wit, 21. And what do we got? I've got three mana. Uh, not a lot of red, though. That's all we got going on. Let's keep it. Hopefully, we'll pull another red along the way. Otherwise, this will be short lived. Zombie hits me in the face. Come on, red mana. Oh, those are all great, but, you know, red mana, man. I mean, we could just go to town if we can get to five. But yet, uh, I need another red mana. You gonna exploit something? Nope. All right, red mana, come on, you can do it. There we go. We'll wipe the board, wipe the board, baby. Wipe the board, start the game over. Um, I'm okay. I can take the hit. I can use the Carnosaur to kill it, but I'm just not thinking sure I'm that concerned. That is a guy I'm concerned about. I just want to make a thousand little dudes. I'd rather just wipe them all out at once. Dinosaur! We got a lot of burn down the houses to burn down. Ah, oh, he's got three cards in his hands. That's a guy we gotta kill. You got any man lands in here? Doesn't look like it. You can play full one of these though. Yeah, all right. Let's go to town. Time to discover. He's got a creature kill. You can be disappointed in what I have coming up next, though. Yoink! I'll go for red. We need the reds right now like crazy. All right, let's see what we can discover this time. Win! Uh, victory! Alright, playing against MC Koga. Or is it just Mick Koga? I think it's MC. He's the master of ceremonies. He's an OG, baby. Keep. Alright, we're beanstalking it. One, two, three. Don't make me play with your mushrooms. All right, Beanstalk. I drew a card. All right, here we go. What's he gonna do? What are we playing here? Hopefully, okay, good. Not Esper's Naya. Those it in is gonna be fantastic against the Naya deck, probably. Ooh, he's playing with a lot of colors. He's got four C so far. Is that all five? Yeah, he's playing five C. All right, we're going to lay out Topiary Stomper. 
We always seem to need red. One, two, three, four, five, two more. We can active that way and the stomper will be active. You guys trying to get to an Atraxia. Yeah, let's go look at his hand. He's playing something kooky up there. Okay, we're gonna put this guy out now. We got the mana for everything else. Totes, my goats. Okay, who cares? Uh, we'll get rid of one of these guys then. Well, he didn't have an Atraxia in it. All right, keep your dudes low. That'd be really great. Uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. I got a seven right there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take uh, El Tali there. All right, I'll start off by doing some damage. Nice. Um... This is Topiary Stomper. I think we're almost we're almost out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright, sounds like Atali's next. Don't be looking at my graveyard, you stupid punk. All right, I'll touch the precious. Ooh, Void Ren's not cool. We're not playing with many creatures at this moment. So Virtue Persistence is not really helping out. He's trying to proc things, things, things back. Do I draw a card? Nah, we'll draw a land, that's fine. Nice. Ooh. If I want to wipe those guys out, I could. What do we got going up here anyway? Get out of my way for a second. I'd make them really low. Yeah, okay, whatever. I should have put them down in a different order. All right, man or oh man, I get out there, do my bidding. All right, so we're having to fight against lots of planeswalkers at this point. I can see he's got Void Rend up there. That could it for a Tali. Don't really need these things. I'll put these over in the garbage section. He's gonna wipe the board. Is 
this is it. I'm just hoping you get a chump out there. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, eight. Let's just go ahead and burn down some houses here with some extra dudes. There we go. There we go. Suck it, sucker fish. I have been against Natu Gusa 84. Natu Gusa. All right, we're cool. Got the ability to get to some ramp once we get to fourth mana, but I think we'll get there. We don't have much to do to start off with, though. Boop, boop, boop. All right, there we are. Two. We're not go. We're not doing what we need, man. We need one more mana. That's it. There we go. Okay. I need black, don't I? So I can kill this thing and it's... Let's cancel. We'll wait. All right. I always get nailed for... Not doing things on people's turns. I'm going to do it this time. Alright, my fourth manas are super slow. We're cool. Are we going to play this? I got to wait till next turn to do it. All right. We'll invasion of Zendikar. Let's go red and black. And again. All right. No. It'd be so much sweeter to kill these guys. What do I got? One, two, three, four. I got seven. We can put out a Tolly. Nice. Yeah, baby. I'm the Midnight Bomber. What bombs at midnight? Oh, the humanity. There we go. There we go. Victory. All right, we're playing against P. Went. Oh, also known as Twent. Went. All right, one, two, three. Oh, that's enough. What do we got? We have any green here at all? We got two reds, which is what we need for the Carnosaurs. Get into the. Get into the invasion of Zendikar, that's the only hard part. We gotta get that. It's a fourth mana, it wouldn't be too bad. We can play everything we got. This is a good hand for us. It's just not a lot to start off with. We're playing against aggro. We're in trouble. No to goblins. People who play goblins play aggro. Roar! Black Cleave Cliffs, where are you gone? I know quickly, I, I really don't know the lyrics to songs. Go, Quint. All right, where's this guy? He's a dinosaur. All right, Cavern Souls will get us into that guy. Dinosaur. And this thing, this deck loves to hound out Invasion of Zendikar. I'll tell you that. Got 
That wants to gain like crazy. Would it just pay three life? Yeah, I could do that. All right, let's Topiary Stomper. And we got to, let's just do green. We start doubling up when we put the, the invasions out. Ooh, man, I need my burn down the houses is what I need. Give me one down, won't you? I I can't rest. Ah, uh, we'll let's kill it while we can. Got another beanstalk. Right, our hands getting a little jiggly here. But we just got to get an invasion out. Next turn, I'll be fine. I got four. I'll get us up to six. I can start playing Carnosaurs after that. He's got to be playing with some sort of creature removal. He's got black up there. He's got to. Got to. Mardu, huh? What are you playing with this thing here? All right, we'll throw this one out. Yoink. Get this guy going. This will get our boy up to seven. Ah, uh, we'll crack that guy open. You're gonna kill ourselves with Topiary Stomper. He doesn't tap. He is unuseful. You gonna block it? Is that what you're gonna do? Nope. All right, two dudes that have Vigilance. Problems, I gotta kill myself a Wandering Emperor quickly. Trumpeting Carnosaur, I could just do it directly or I can put him out and then it's just extra turn to have to get him all up and running. See, that's the guy that's got to die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just enough. I haven't made it up to like billionaire level yet. Let's just see what we get. But I'll we'll put it out. Draw two guys. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we'll take another stomper. Stomp, stomp, chewy chomp. Green this time, fine. And uh, let's virtue persist our way to the death of that guy. All right, so that guy's a super jerk. I want to lose a guy. That's the question. Yeah, let's just take out Wandering Emperor. One guy dies. The other two can be blocked. He can keep Wandering Emperor around. There we go. Yeah, which one should I pick? Thing one or thing two? How about both of them?
All right, so you could pump up Amelia Bedelia to the seven. We could trade off at that point. And I'll throw out another one. Let's organize my hand. Uh, what are you doing, Serpico? There we go. All right, let's put out the cottage. We'll go rip her apart. We'll see what you do there. It's trample, baby. Either you either get in front of it to kill it or you do nothing. And let's see what else we can get. That's it, huh? My right, invasions in cars are now worthless. I don't think I have any very much land map. Yeah, just two. Which means all those are just garbage now. Ah, uh, see, that'll do three. No point. Let's pull one of these out because we can. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Could be too little too late by the time we get the opportunity. I got a lot of beat. I got to beat down. Oh, he's trying to kill me here. Yeah, she's gotten above my threshold to kill. Might have to burn down the house and then trumpeting Carnosaur. But he's got the ability to do virtue persistence, which is really bad. What do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm down to six. And I'll be dead. What do I got to do? Put this out. That's this is called Dinosaur Boom. We'll go do that. Let's go ahead and wipe a little board. Five points crossed it. One. That's good. Two. Three. All right, so we got a Carnosaur somebody for three. That's going to cost me your life to do it. And we're going to go destroy target. And in we go. All right, we got him down 23. Can we turn this around from point of three here? All of our trumpeting carnosaurs are gone. We could bring somebody back from the graveyard, though. There 
There we go. That's exactly what we needed here. All right, number one, let's go for the throw. Pow. We're going to, whatever, get, get what you need. Let's bring somebody back. Ooh, I want this one. Do I need life gainer? This guy right here? Oh, yeah. All right, what else could we got going on here? Uh, do I still have seven? One, two, let's see if we can do this. Not you. Stop it. I'm going to have to get rid of some stuff here pretty soon. Let's just keep going for the throat. Three cards. One, two, and, uh, Slow land there. All right, so we're only at three. We're doing really good. Welcome to the fun side, my friend. All right, let's go eat this guy up. And we win! Devastating, overpowering deck levels there. Victory! Alright, let's see, we play against Golden Goat. It's not the Golden Goat, it's Gold and Goat. As in, like, and goats. Because that's what's important. I'm trying to play... Trying to play lands nowadays requires a doctorate in Magic the Gathering. Keep! Mostly it's trying to figure out when to play which land in comparison to what. The timing of it. All right, there's two. Do I really want to worry about it? There's a lot of crap that goes on with Kamano. Let's just go ahead and kill that thing. Is he playing something in snow-covered lands, is he? Like, I'm dooming myself to a... Uh, having to play these things for defensive purposes. I'm not a big fan of that. If I can tell we stomp her out, then what's going to happen? A whole lot of nothing. Alright, so three. Let's get the stomper going. What do I got? I got red, red. Let's go for a black in this case. All right, we're at four, which means Stomper's a long way from getting activated. If we can get one more mana, we can burn down a house. I could go ahead and something number three with Trumpeting Carnosaur. I could go something to three with Virtue Persistence. And a Boulder and Epicure is not my idea of a good chance. That's a guy I want to kill. All right. Okay, so two for this. Grabbed it, put that out. Let's take this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How'd that guy stay alive so much longer? Grab one from the other guy. Dang it. All right, we're just gonna have to burn everything to the ground is what we're gonna have to do. I will kill you. Keep putting them out. Put them out nice and slow. I'm going to take a huge amount of damage this turn. 
I thought Godric was going to slip down by one. I wasn't paying attention. All right, cool. Good for you. And a land. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because he has, usually they'll play some pretty sweet stuff. Yikes, that is a problem. All right, Tali probably be my best bet. I don't have it. All right, so Trumping Carnosaur. There's another mana. That's good. What are you going to get me, my friend? Yeah. Except that sucks. Who cares? All right, well, we have the ability to block Urbrass Forge. That's good. He's rolling for something. He's not gonna like my next few moves though. He just skipped right past your poor forging. Didn't even get a chance for him to die. They're like me sinks, my friend. They like to be used. All right, Tali. And all in. There we go. Now he's got to hopefully to get shot in the face. That's the thing we're most concerned with at this point. Otherwise, we'll win. I just don't see it. I mean, we got super killer ability here. I could burn down the house for three for three little devils. All right, you're getting. I don't think you make that guy unblockable, but you can get yourself some life out of the deal. You coming at me, bra? All right, so I got more than enough to kill you. You know it. That's an artifact creature. I can't do anything about that. And that's the end of it. Winner, winner, victory dinner. All right, so here we are playing with Jun Minray, Jund Midrange. Yep. This this deck was um, really good. It was really incredibly good. Um, I felt like it had a lot of balance to it, and it did such an incredible job of playing. I have not been in situations where I've been down to like less than five life and then turned it around like so many times. I, I that happened to me a bunch, two or three times in while Tribes play, was playing this deck. It had an incredible ability to rebound from practically nothing. It's probably because it doesn't do very well at first. I mean, it is kind of a slow to mature deck. I mean, you got Brothers of Hood in that likes to wipe things out, go for the throat, keeps you alive. You got some ramp in there. So early game's a little on the boring side, um, but it does have the ability to control things if you get the right cards. But if you take a look, so much of it is expensive. Four and greater. Yeah, you, you really need to, you know, you have to hit everything in stride to be able to get your deck up into this level, which is just awesome cards 5,000. I mean, it's just nothing but awesome, awesome, awesome up at that level. All right, so uh, let's just see. Who was the MVP? I'm going to tell you who the MVP was. The card I kept 
prime for all the time, Invasion of Zendikar. That was my MVP. Um, there were times when it was just like, look, I, I can't do anything more with Invasion of Zendikar. Mostly it's because I ran out of basic lands by that point and was like, what can I do now? Sure, I could always crack him open to pull out the dude on the inside and just hit the gooey center. But um, he's not that great. He just provides more mana and is, what is he, like a 3-4 or something like that? A 4-4. Four, four. So he's, he's pretty decent, but, you know, it wasn't really necessary. So there were times an invasion, invasion of Zendikar was a dull card. But by far, he was the card that, that transformed it from being a low-end deck to a high-end deck, which got me into playing plays 5, 6, 7s uh, totally. So this was the one that did the big jump it jumped you up to the level that you wanted to be playing at. So Invasion of Zendikar, you are the MVP. Congratulations. All right, so was this deck competitive? Um, yeah, I had oh, like 83% win rate with this deck. I went for just game after game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row with complete wins. And it wasn't like it was because something bad was happening. This deck just has that ability. It is incredible. Um, yeah. This deck, I mean, it barely ever lost. Um, one time, it was just because something was just faster. I couldn't, whatever reason, I was doing a good job of ramping, but I couldn't get anything that uh, was less than four, you know, was less than five mana, and I couldn't make it to five mana. Another time, um, why did I lose on that next one? I forget. It was it was a long, long time ago. I forget why I lost on it. But anyways, yeah, what could you do? So um, this deck was incredibly good, and uh, I just it's just it's hard to really undersell how good this deck was competitively. Really good. All right, was this deck fun? Yeah, man, absolutely. These colors, fantastic. What I loved is, I mean, I love red, right? Red, 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 and Brothers of Eden, Burn Down the House, Trumping Carnage Sword, and Tali, fantastic, right? Uh, black. Also great. Love playing a good Rakdos. Virtue Persistence. Go for the Throat. Cruelty of Gix. Cruelty of Gix, that's the one card I'm just like, really? Really? Cruelty of Gix? You couldn't put anything better in here? But still, this allows you to do a lot of really good things, and it's not that expensive. You know, force a person to discard something in hand. At least it lets you look at their hand, which is what is really good. And then go get something that you want and put it back into your hand. You lose three life. Yeah, I'm fine. There's probably something I really want to do. Most likely, Burn Down the House or Brotherhood Inn is going to carry it. Um, I love Brotherhood Inn being able to take out artifacts. That's a big deal right now. And lastly, put a target creature from your graveyard back to the battlefield under your control. That's one of, you know, like these guys, Trumpeting Karmasaur or Vitali. Yeah, if I'm, I mean, there's not many. You you have This is essentially a dinosaur tribal deck, only because that's all you have creature-wise is dinosaurs in here. It's not. There's only three of them in there, man. So this isn't really tribal. It's more just other cards, man. All right, so last that gets us to green. What's green doing for us? It's doing the ramp. It's doing the ramp big time. Up the beanstalk, the beer room, but it does allow you to get that, do that card draw and give you more card draw whenever you play uh, something with the mana value of five or greater. We got a lot of cards we're playing with stuff five or greater. We just got to ramp up there. So we got card draw. We got ramping. This deck is just, it's doing it all. And that was really fun, in my opinion. Um, I just liked it because I love it when we can start getting out Tali and Trump and Commerce. We got Trample, Virtual Persistence to start pulling people back from other graveyards, burning down the house to clear the boards or using it for devils. Fun, 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 fun across the board. All right, was this deck interesting? Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Why? Because it was three colors. I got to say, I'm not a big fan of three colors. I really dislike have the like what happens with me. For some reason, it's like I have like all red dudes and I can't get red mana. Just black and green, right? This deck did a pretty decent job of avoiding that. We got all these dual lands, and the the these the, the Topiary Stomper and the Evasion of Zendikar lets you go pick exactly what you want, and that's exactly what we needed to be able to get our mana fixed, so we can get our way into here. Which is weird, is that yeah? If you look at the red, it's all dual red. You know, you need two reds like crazy in this deck. A little bit of dual blacks right there, and one dual green. So it's funny is that you need a lot of green just to get the thing started, but you got to bounce into red and black by the time you get to mid game to be able to play the rest of the cards that are going on there. So anyways, was this thing interesting? Yeah, playing it three colors was an interesting mix. I knew these cards were good. I guessed that the mix was going to work out fine, but um, seeing it in play, I really appreciated it. 
And I thought it was, I mean, it was just such a consistent, balanced deck. It had such a great feeling to it. I really liked it. All right, so let's add that up. Was it competitive? Super big time. Was it fun? Absolutely. Was it interesting? Totes my goats. Which makes this into an A-plus deck. And as I'm required by federal law to say, this deck is so choice. I would highly recommend you pick one up should you have the means. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, screw you guys, I'm going home. Bye.